Hey everyone, Genota here. Welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show that starts with words that I am clearly plagiarizing. Last year, the Pikmin fanbase saw the release of Pikmin 4, the latest entry of Pikmin that added, uh, Ice Pikmin, Glow Pikmin, Climbable Walls, Moving Bases, Safe Scumming, a dog, but more notably an increased focus on verticality not as present in previous games. To complement this verticality, Pikmin 4 allows you to ride on top of Ochi, and for the first time ever, jump. Unfortunately, as it turns out, Ochi isn't quite adjusted to the planet's gravity as he should be, so let's take it easy on the legs this time by not having him jump whenever needed. My entire playthrough of this was streamed here on YouTube, accessible through this playlist, so check it out if you want. This video will go in order based on how I progress, so stick around as I try to answer the question, can you beat Pikmin 4 without jumping? Dropping into the game, we get reacquainted with the character most would recognize, Captain Olimar. Despite having great mobility in Smash Bros, we start with him riding on top of his new companion, Moss. The tutorial teaches us a new ability to the franchise, charging a rush with Moss in order to destroy some pottery. And here is our first problem. The jump button is mapped to X, and so is rushing. In order to rush, we must first jump while riding Moss. Unfortunately, after some quick checks, there aren't any ways to get off Moss and rush from the side or simply go around. And on top of that, there is a gate that needs to be knocked down as well. This means that with two required jump rushes, it is not possible to beat Pikmin 4 without jumping. At least with Moss. Touching down on the planet with our own character, we are quickly introduced to Ochi, who can currently only rush into walls and carry objects, allowing us to finish the rest of the tutorial without any problems. After that, we are sent on our merry way to collect things, save people, and enter the safe. Oh my god, wait a minute. Oh, I think my, I think I might have figured something out. Hold on. I think we're close. Ochi straight up landed on it. Wait, use a bomb? <gasps> oh my god, wait, wait, I have bombs, yeah. I, oh man, good investment getting those earlier. Okay, Ochi. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Um, let's see. Alright, uh, what's a good angle? Let's go here. Ochi, you and I. Yes, yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> PCU, you are the greatest. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh my god. We did it. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Uh. It's possible. The run is saved. Get up here, boys. We did it. Screw the safe. We're going in here. So as it turns out, over the course of these streams, we have discovered five methods to avoid jumping a Pikmin 4. The most common method as just seen is to get on top of Ochi, throw a bomb, and if you angle yourself just right, the explosion radius will launch you and or Ochi onto the ledge you are trying to reach. With this in mind, let's recount the journey. Since Ochi currently isn't capable of jumping anyway, we are able to clear a majority of the base area similar to that of a typical any percent playthrough including the cave's last frost cavern and crackling cauldron. After Ochi gets his first few upgrades, as well as the ability to build bridges, we are able to take on Leafling Olimar in Trial Run. Also something I forgot to mention is that if Ochi jumps at any time, you must either rewind time or close and reopen the game. Accidental jumps will not be permitted in a true jumpless run. One thing I did to prevent this was remapping my controller, swapping screenshot and X, meaning that if I really wanted to press X, I would press screenshot instead and if I impulsively pressed X, it would screenshot. After making our way over to Equifer's Summit, we are stopped by two big steps, and as it stands now, we are unable to enter Equifer's Summit, Hectic Hollows, and Industrial Maze, nor the first Dandori Challenge, but luckily we have enough Sparklium to move on to Blossoming Arcadia. Don't worry, we'll come back to this later. 
In the new location, everything is luckily accessible from the ground level, so we can quickly take on Leafling Olimar again, as well as clear a secluded courtyard, drafty gallery, sightless passage, and the two Dandorian challenges. With enough sparklium, we are able to take off to serene shores. The big gimmick here is the changing tides, which doesn't really change gameplay too much, but it is harder to deal with enemies since we can't attack enemies by rushing Ochi with our Pikmin on top. Instead, we have to rush Ochi first to instigate, then charge our Pikmin, and it's best to wait until the tides recede to attack like this. While collecting Sparklium, as well as taking on Leafling Olimar for the third time, our goal is to get enough castaways to save Yanni, who unlocks night expeditions for us. To do this, I entered Seafloor Resort, but only obtained the castaways, leaving the cave for another day. Once we get Yanni, the third Leafling, and enough Sparklium, we can move on away from here for now. But again, we will return to finish up all loose ends later. The nice thing about Night Expeditions is that they emphasize using Glow Pikmin for attacking, so leaving Ochi to defend the Luminal allows us to clear every Night Expedition possible, similarly to a standard playthrough. However, if you want to get through it quickly, just do the first two in Sun Spiggle Terrace and the second one in Serene Shores so you end up with an extra Glow Sap for Olimar. Finally, we're back here again. To get into the safe, simply get the playing card at the beginning, then make your way over to the fan in front of the safe. The playing card gives you the first number, allowing you to code break the safe and finally enter the safe. After defeating Leafling Olimar, move to the closest base and take him home. Once he is cured, we have successfully rescued Olimar without jumping. <laughs> This is going to bother me. Now that we have cleared the literal first half of the game, I think it is now time to introduce the jumpless skips that are going to help us complete each area. So let's head back to Sunspeckled Terrace and recap. In order to enter Industrial Maze and Hectic Hollows, we're going to use the most common jump skip that we discovered, bombs. After you hopefully stocked up on bombs by buying 5 every day, we can use the bomb to launch ourselves up. If only your captain makes it up, it's fine because you can simply throw Pikmin up, or enter and leave the cave to get Ochi up. This same skip can be used to enter the Dandori challenge, albeit a bit more tricky, but after some practice and enough bombs, you'll make it up. To enter Aquifer's Summit, you could use bombs, but a more cost-effective solution is the second skip, abusing terrain. By holding Ochi in a rush charge, and walking into corners that have a little bit of ground on them, Ochi will momentarily end up on top, and if you release the charge or cancel, Ochi will stay there. Be careful, Ochi himself will tend to walk down to you, so I recommend mapping switch to a shortcut so Ochi won't walk off. Now the caves themselves. When we first enter Industrial Maze, we will start separated from Ochi, but like a dumb stupid idiot, I not only let Ochi down to the start, but I also left meaning that every time we re-enter, Ochi will start on the lower section. Regardless, I recommend entering this cave after obtaining Rush Boots, as it allows us to walk across the conveyor belts without having to rush. On the second sub-level, we are stopped by a couple of steps, but luckily we have another option that isn't even a jump skip, it's just common cheese in the entire franchise. You can throw a yellow Pikmin behind this bag and they'll push it down, but you're not entirely home free yet as Ochi has no way to make it up. Luckily to get him up, you can position him under the SS Beagle and switch bases, bringing him up to you and allowing you to clear the cave. This is another cave you'll need to come back to later in the game, as there are some treasures that can't be reached with yellow Pikmin, but have to be thrown from higher up. There are two solutions involved here, but here's the main one. While we can't jump to get up, we can try jumpless skip number three, literal bum rushing. If you hold Ochi's charge, then release at the right time before hitting a wall and continue running, Ochi will bounce up a little and your captain will push Ochi forward, resulting in him ending up on top of the ledge. This is the next most common jump skip as it can be tried as many times as possible without any costs. From there, you can whistle your Pikmin and captain which brings them up to you. Now I know it looks like the captain and Pikmin are jumping, but really they're not. Why is this? It's because I'm running this with the textbook definition of a jump. The tutorial clearly states that jumping is done by pressing X while riding Ochi, and that simply getting on Ochi is used with Y and is a ride or dismount, not a jump. Even those fans in Heroes Hideaway aren't jumps as we're not pressing X to get on them. Back to Hectic Hollows, with your captain with you, you can rush Ochi to knock down the castaway and throw winged Pikmin to get the treasure. Just for good measure, I even jump skip to the exit, clearing the entirety of Sunspeckle Terrace without jumping. Okay, uh, future Genota, just put down like a little text, show a quick first summit being done as well. Returning back to Blossomy Arcadia, we're able to clear Kingdom of Beasts without any issues, just keep managing Ochi so he doesn't accidentally jump. With that, somehow, Blossomy Arcadia goes down as the only area without any jump skips required. 
Picking up where we left off, we quickly clear the engulfed castle, which requires only some Pikmin to be thrown in order to skip jumping. Luckily, most of the above area doesn't require any jumping, and a little tip in these clay pots is that they can be broken with bombs since you can't charge with Ochi while swimming. Unluckily, however, are the other caves that each require a different strategy to avoid jumping. So let's start by tying up loose ends in Seafloor Resort. This cave probably has one of the most unique ways to avoid jumping, so I'm not even going to count it as a jump skip. Essentially, on the second sub-level, we're stopped by these pair of steps with a treasure on top. And unfortunately, I hadn't been saving on bombs at this point, but there is something I had been somehow saving up. 100 Ice Pikmin. Alright, deploy. This is so cool. Oh my god, I could just do that. Let's go. After being extra safe and making sure Ochi doesn't jump, we come across a very tall ledge, immediately crossing out the rush strategy. Thankfully, bombs work with some careful precision that can help you get some extra height before the explosion. This candle is placed on a ledge that you're meant to throw yellow Pikmin to from a moving platform that you can reach using a jump skip. Unfortunately, this was a cave I attempted before discovering any of the previously mentioned jump skips, but luckily, past Genota was smart enough to work around this. You can throw yellow Pikmin from the opposite side, go over to the platform, then whistle the Pikmin closer before disbanding. Past Genota here was so happy to discover his first cheese during the run, only to have his dreams crushed by... No... Oh my god... Luckily, we returned to this cave after figuring out a lot of new jump skips. Actually, no, I decided to return after figuring out the bomb skip, which allowed us to move on to sub level 3. Once again, using these fans do not count as jumping, so we're able to clear the floor like normal. But if you luck out like me and end up with some winged Pikmin out of reach, we're gonna need to come up with something different. In comes the next jump skip, rushing forward. As you'd expect, rushing Ochi in front of you launches him forward, and luckily this gives us a quick and easy way to cover small gaps without using bombs. So by rushing Ochi onto this mushroom, he'll bounce over to the candy pop bud and pluck the wing pick. With that, we move on to the next sub level where our dreams are crushed once again with a surface that just happens to be turned 90 degrees. Clearing the rest of the floor is a total cakewalk, just like normal, but this still leaves the taunting wall. Well, for past Genota at least. This is where I started to perfect the literal bum rush skip from earlier, even figuring out it's much more reliable shooting directly at the wall you want to climb at, while remaining close yet parallel to its neighboring wall. From there, our dreams are crushed once again. Once again. Now, we could try the rushing forward strategy from earlier, Ochi no! Or, we could try our backup option from the future, the rushing forward strategy from earlier. <gasps> oh my god, 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 oh my god. A key thing about this jumpless run is that upgrading is very essential, so the more upgrades you have, the better success you will achieve. By the looks of it, Ochi definitely had rush boots, a better charge upgrade, and ultra spicy spray. So add that to the notes. If you can't get something now, there's no harm in getting it later. After that, we finally kick the disco ball to the trash and move on, clearing the entirety of Serene Shores. Now that we're finally back here, it's time to put our newfound jump skips to the test. On the kitchen counter, these pots up here can be destroyed with bombs, eliminating the need to get Ochi up, and we can enter Frozen Inferno from the base level, which requires only one jump skip at the beginning. In the second sub-level, there is a jump skip required to nab this one treasure, which isn't too difficult, but it's the third sub-level that brought a new sense of difficulty to this run. While we could probably chuck some winged Pikmin to reach these grapes, past Genota did not plan for this, so we'll have to do things the fun way. After a bit of planning, we came up with a strategy. Take the fan up to the platform and throw at least 15 Pikmin onto this metal section before falling off. Disband the rest of your Pikmin, hop back onto the platform, and prepare to do a very precise and very well-timed bomb jump. I'd say throw the bomb at your current spot at least a second after after the platform starts moving, this should get your captain at least onto the metal. Wait for the platform to move before falling onto it, then throw your Pikmin into the grapes, pulling them down and allowing you to continue through the cave without any further issues. Since you'll have Ochi after leaving the cave, you can walk off this table and onto this bag to knock down and collect this pin. To enter Plunder Palace without jumping, you can fall down from the above section, and exiting the cave will allow you to bring all your Pikmin as well as Ochi up to this area. Before entering, I'd recommend bringing winged Pikmin instead of purples, or at least bringing winged Pikmin on a second attempt, as there are some things we're going to need them for. On the first sub-level, we can use a jump skip to access this ledge, then by throwing yellow Pikmin we can collect this first dice. Now to get these other two dice, uh...
I guess there's some other strategies. Let's just see. Maybe I can just throw wing flipping from here. Oh my god. Was that really the trick this whole time? As it turns out, you can just throw winged Pikmin to grab the dice, but be careful, if they bring down the first dice, there's a chance they won't be able to lock onto the second. So by throwing one at a time, you can whistle the Pikmin off the first dice and lure them to the second one before disbanding, allowing you to get both dice without jumping. On the second sub-level, we can get the glasses without having to go there ourselves by throwing yellow Pikmin onto this fan and luring them over to the glasses. Now to actually get to the next entrance, we're stopped by this three-layer jump skip, which, of course, we figured out. The first jump can be done with the literal bum rush skip from earlier, but we're not given enough room to do it again, forcing our hand to do a bomb skip instead. With your captain up two levels, we're stopped by this formidable fan. On the fourth sub-level, we can avoid jumping by carefully throwing yellow Pikmin onto this rope, turning on this fan and thrusting us into the next problem. Screw that. We can clear this entire top section by throwing up all of our yellow Pikmin and guiding them from below, allowing us to clear the rest of the cave as well as the rest of Hero's Hideaway without any jumps. With that, we've cleared everything in the first four areas, so let's do a little recap before moving on. First, let's go over the jump skips. The most common jump skip used throughout this run is the bomb jump, where you can throw a bomb, get on Ochi, then put yourself at the right distance to be launched. The bomb will always launch you the same distance, but the angle of which you get launched at is based on how close you are to the bomb. So for more distance, stand just barely close to the explosion radius, and for height, stand so close that you might even be stepping on the bomb itself as it explodes. A little tip I found out later is that you can dismount Ochi right as the bomb explodes, giving you a little extra height. The second jump skip is the literal bomb rush skip from earlier. Hold Ochi in front of you as a charge, then run it towards a wall and let go of the charge just before Ochi touches the wall. If you do it correctly, Ochi will be pushed up by your captain, forcing him onto the wall or even on top of your captain. Swap over to Ochi and secure the height before whistling your captain and Pikmin up with you. The third jump skip is to abuse terrain. Hold Ochi in a charge and walk into a corner that is a little sloped and just move yourself around until Ochi eventually ends up on top. Then release the charge or cancel it, once again securing your height before whistling. Sometimes the terrain is so messed up you can even just walk with Ochi to make it up. The fourth jump skip is the rushing forward skip. If Ochi has enough upgrades on his charge and speed, you can charge Ochi, hold him close to an edge and release him, allowing Ochi to clear very short gaps without jumping. Now that we've recapped the previous four, it's time to introduce our fifth jump skip, Mines. Courtesy of the Pikmin community, it was discovered that by using a mine, you can throw it onto your captain while against a wall, and the mine will bump you up similarly to how Ochi gets bumped up from the literal bum rush skip from earlier. As far as I can tell, this isn't used too often, just in areas where you don't have Ochi, speaking of whom, the mine skip doesn't work on Ochi for some reason. Of course, there are a bunch of situational jump skips, such as freezing water in Seafloor Resort but so far we've gotten a lot of progress without having to jump. With the jump skips recapped, I feel that I never fully clarified the rules that define this challenge. Obviously, no jumping, which itself was defined by the game's tutorial. Pressing X while riding Ochi or Moss is a jump, while any other action such as pressing Y to ride or dismount is not a jump. The big issue with this run is that jumping is only done by Ochi or Moss, who both have a fully advanced Go Here system. Avoid letting them use any auto movement features, as most of the time they'll take shortcuts by jumping. The workaround to this is to prioritize using Pikmin for carrying objects, while being extra sure Moss or Ochi won't try to do anything fancy when you send them to do something. Once again, Go Here is not banned, but is strongly avoided due to the risk. What is banned, however, is Pebble Pitcher. Not only does it disappointingly make the game easier, but it can probably eliminate the need for some jumps. For the true challenge, Pebble Pitcher will be banned, so that two-player playtime better have five zeros every time you beat this challenge. One final mention, if you do end up jumping at any point, you must either rewind time or exit and reopen the game to the last save. Loading time is the punishment. Alright, with that out of the way, let's finally move on into spoiler territory. Yeah, if you haven't beaten the game, this is where you should stop, but I'm gonna assume most of you have, so let's move on to Olimar's Shipwreck Tale. Sunspeckled Terrace and Blossoming Arcadia go down easily without any need for jumping, although just make sure you stack up on bombs whenever possible. In Serene Shores, you can collect some bombs around the sandcastle to blow up any pots submerged in water, as well as this bomb skip to reach the Flower Lake. Now at last, we encounter for the first time for the last time at Hero's Hideaway. In a replay of the tutorial, the very tutorial where my dream of not jumping met its limits earlier, we come to find out... I can jump off moss. Let's go. 
Yeah, for some reason in the tutorial you were locked onto Moss, yet for some reason coming back later allows you to dismount Moss, meaning you can clear the entire replay tutorial without jumping. And with that, the entirety of Olimar's Shipwreck Tail can be cleared without jumping. This of course unlocks Trial of the Sage Leaf, which right off the bat crushes my dreams for like the fifth time now, so let's hold off a little. After getting some upgrades, let's move forward onto Giant's Hearth. In this back section, freezing the water and abusing terrain can be used to reach the Dandori battle, meaning most of the above ground can be cleared without issue. Keyword, most. The main problem with Giant's Hearth is the hearth itself, as this giant grill just sits in the middle of the area with these steps being the main way up. Now the question remains, how can we get over it without jumping? Well, let's put a pin in that for now. Instead, let's head into ultimate testing range before the day ends. Entering the third sublevel requires the literal bum rush skip from earlier. Luckily the rest of the cave doesn't have any other problems, just make sure to build each and every bridge, regardless of how useless they are, as these count to a mission which itself counts towards 100% completion. After taking out two Dandori challenges, we move on to Cradle of the Beast, which requires only a bomb skip to reach this upper area, as well as the entrance. In Dream Home, we can use the rush forward skip to get Ochi across this section with the mushrooms, and once again for good measure, we can use the literal bum rush skip from earlier to reach the exit. Now all we're left with is the giant grill. It has two sites, one of which can be accessed only by your captain via a climbable wall, allowing you to collect the treasures with winged Pikmin, and the other side contains the Dandori challenge locked behind some actual platforming. This platforming is definitely not possible, especially with this giant gap that covers vertical and horizontal distance, and with this climbable wall blocking up Ochi, it eliminates nearly all of our jump skips. All but one. Yes, 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 oh my fucking god. Yes! <laughs> with the hearth scavenge, this leaves us with the last area of the game, Primordial Thicket. There is a lot to cover here, so let's go section by section. This section near the start involves this treasure placed on top of some platforming, which luckily for us can be cheesed with some winged Pikmin. Nearby is another section of platforming, but the first two steps can be cleared by abusing terrain, and from there we can throw a winged Pikmin to bring the treasure down. From there we enter a subterranean swarm, which fortunately has nothing worthy to write home about. Near the opposite side of where you start, there is this section consisting of a lake filled with mud. Now what's so special about this area? Well, there's this box to push in order to get to the winged onion and a Dandori challenge. But the problem is that once you push this box, there is no way back up without doing some jump skips. So to save as much time as possible, I'd recommend the following strategies. Obtain 6 Flarlicks to have access to 80 Pikmin. Bring 80 Pikmin to freeze the mud. Then you can do a literal bum rush skip from earlier to get Ochi up so he can carry back the treasure. Or alternatively, as I discovered from the Pikmin community, you can use Ice Blast to freeze the mud, giving you enough time to carry back the treasure with winged Pikmin. Either strategy works, and then you can skip these mushrooms by throwing white Pikmin up towards the peach and having them carry it back. Once you're all prepared, get on the inner side of this area, then use white Pikmin to push down the box. Abuse terrain a little to get Ochi on top and rush him towards the box. Whistle everyone up and start carrying the winged onion, and as long as it makes it down to base level, you're free to enter the Dandori challenge. In my conquest to get my 6th floor lick, I ended up entering the mud pit, which didn't require any jumps. After abusing terrain some more to reach the final Dandori challenge, we are left with one goal. Get Louie. Ooh, he's on top of these flowers. Oh, that's platforming. <gasps> There's no edge. Oh no, that's an actual jump. Oh no. Yep. The final Dandori cave is placed on top of this stump, with the only way up being to jump across these two potted mushrooms, requiring a literal hop, skip, and a jump. Over the course of two weeks, I was able to pin down a strategy, so let's take each one down, one at a time. To get onto the first flower, we discovered a completely new, yet entirely situational jump skip. Weird how this one works. From there, we are tasked to get onto the second flower by performing the most difficult bomb skip of the entire run.
As far as I know, I am the first person to answer the question, is Pikmin 4 beatable jumpless? And that's what I'm still here for, to answer this question. And I just did it! I just did it! Oh my god! <laughs> We're not home free quite yet, as there is still one more jump to skip. Luckily, this jump isn't too tall, and a bomb jump with just your captain should be enough to get you on top of the stump, allowing you to kick Luby in the face before he abandons Moss. Now, to give a more satisfying conclusion, and for the sake of following the streams, let's diverge a little and swap over to the Trial of the Sage Leaf challenges. <laughs> Enter the challenge with as many upgrades as possible. In my case, I was lacking Infinite Rush and Plucking Whistle. On the first story, quickly defeat the main bulwarp and grab the bomb it's guarding. Then after clearing the other bulwarps, use the bomb to bomb skip onto this mushroom. Then defeat the remaining bulwarps. On the fourth story, save enough time that you can do a literal bum rush skip from earlier and reach the Sage Leaf. Other than that, the fifth story is only slightly hindered without the ability to jump, but the other floors are cleared without any issues, allowing us to gain the white and purple onions without jumping. This means that all we have left is defeating Louie in the cavern for a king. After a long crawl through a cave filled with absolutely no jumps, we catch up to Louie and engage in a fight with the ancient sire hound. In the electricity phase, you can avoid having to dodge the sparks by simply destroying furballs with yellow or glow pikmin. In the fire phase, try to destroy the furballs quickly and dodge the shockwaves of fire. But if you can't, as long as OG has fire protection, you can simply whistle your Pikmin after they get hit with fire. When I started this cave, I didn't know the shockwave was for the fire phase rather than the gloom phase, so I took the precaution of throwing my Pikmin to safety while fighting. But somehow, after the long and enduring fight, we take down the Sirehound, rescuing Louie and successfully beating the post game without jumping. Coming back afterwards, we can clear Louie's side missions as well as every other mission, and with everything in the game accounted for, the Pikmin 4 jumpless run is... Impossible. I knew it was going to come back to bite me. Ugh. The tutorial, once again, proves that we need to jump twice in order to even get the game going. Until we discover a way to destroy the pot and knock down this wall without having to jump, it is currently impossible to beat Pikmin 4 without jumping. Let's see here. There! Look at that! Beautiful! I'm not- I'm not jumping, I'm rushing. Look at this. And now if I hold it... Beautiful. God damn it. As I was trying to figure out how to do the skip earlier in Primordial Thicket, I discovered something interesting. While pressing X on top of Ochi or Moss makes you jump before charging a rush, if you're in a state where you're not able to jump, pressing X will instead start charging a rush without having you jump first. On top of that, with some more testing, this entire back section has a bunch of barriers that prevents you from jumping but still allows you to charge a rush. So by holding it long enough, you can break the pots and knock down the wall without jumping, meaning that, yes, it is possible to completely beat everything in Pikmin 4 without jumping. Now here's the final stinger though. The playthrough I streamed is merely just practice, not an official run as I did have to cheat a little. Every time I jumped accidentally, I just moved forward without a second thought as opposed to reloading. And I even jumped past the primordial thicket section because even though I knew it was possible, I just didn't feel like attempting it. Don't worry, I did do it legitimately, but as it stands, there is not a completely true jumpless run of Pikmin 4. Well, as of right now. It's weird for me to say this, but what's the point of a challenge if I'm the only one doing it? That's why I'm calling out to anyone out there with enough spare time and a passion for Pikmin to attempt a true Pikmin 4 jumpless run. All of the resources and knowledge I have towards a jumpless run have been given in this video. Heck, even speedrun if you want. Could you imagine a jumpless percent speedrun for Pikmin? Special thanks to Shrimp Alotto for being the first person to donate to the channel, Big Hade for sticking around for every stream, and BCU Player for suggesting the first bomb skip, as well as everyone else who watched this guy give up his weekends to answer the question, can you beat Pikmin 4 without jumping? With all this said and done, I think there's still one more question in mind. Can you beat Pikmin 2 without jumping?